My name's Alex and I'm the ASI Senator for Undergraduate and Graduate Affairs. Today we have a diverse group of panel students and I'm going to introduce them. Um, oh, and we have Tim Ryan, our president, who will be a moder our ASI president, who will be moderating um, us today. So first we have Rafael Nino, who is a senior majoring in communication. Um, next to him we have Ileana Perez, who is an alumni, um, and she, her, she gained her bachelor's degree in mathematics at Fresno State, a master's degree in economics from Claremont University, and is a doctoral student in education, policy, evaluation, and reform at Claremont University. Um, next to her, we have Ian Whitehead, who is a senior majoring in political science. Um, following Ian, we have Sierra Armstead, who is a senior majoring in health administration with a minor in, minor in Africana studies. And finally, we have Mong Lor, who is a junior majoring in nursing. Thank you all, and if we can please give them a round of applause for coming out today. Thank you, Alex, for the introductions. So uh, we'll just get into the first question here. But also, um, if you wanted to speak a little bit more about your experience or uh, share a little bit more about yourself with the group before you go ahead and answer, I think that would also be totally fine if you wanted to do that. So the, the first question that we have is uh, asking you to identify one major barrier that you have faced and what did you do to overcome it? And Ileana, also um, from your undergraduate experience, So we can start on this. You know what? Uh, ladies first, right? Okay, well, hello everyone. I'm so happy to be back here. Um, I'm a fre proud Fresno State alumna, uh, class of 2009. Um, so, by far, my number one barrier um, as a college student was being undocumented. So, I've navigated the educational system being undocumented all the way up until 2013 when I became a DACA recipient. So, the way I was able to overcome that is 100% due to Fresno State. I was fully funded by the Smith Camp Family Honors College uh, when I applied back in 2004. So I started Fresno State in 2005. And um, in addition to the Smith Camp Family Honors College fully funding uh, my education, I received so, so much support from faculty, from staff, from administrators at Fresno State that ultimately um, really gave me the research opportunities, the professional experiences that have led me toward um, now pursue uh, almost finalizing my PhD and doing many other um, advocacy efforts to support undocumented students across the country. So um, before I get to the question, um, I'm a senior now, and uh, I'm really I, we're graduating in May, and I'm I'm really looking forward to gradu graduation day. Um, so I'm going to be participating in four uh, commencement ceremonies, the university, uh, the main university one, uh, the column department, uh, Chicano Latino Studies, or Chicano Latino uh, commencement ceremony, and my college, which is uh, Arts and Humanities. So really looking forward to that. Um, also as a senior, and I don't know if I can share this view with uh, some of the students here, um, I learned a lot of stuff, but I learned them when I was a senior. <laughs> like, um, let's see, I learned how to do proper research um, until I was a senior, and I wish I would have known that um, when I was a freshman. Um, and I kind of ran into a class that um, that asked us to to talk to a librarian and uh, learn the tools uh, to do to do research. And my life would have been a lot more easier had I known that since the beginning. Um, so um, it's, it's so weird that you learn all these things when you're a senior. You're about to leave and then you learn them, right? Um, anyway, so I'll just get to uh, the question. The hardest thing for me um, was getting here. I transferred here from Fresno City. Um, I love the humanities. Uh, I've never been big on science or uh, math. So um, I really struggled trying to get that math out of the way um, to, to come in as a transfer student. Um, so what I did to overcome that barrier, um, I actually dropped all of my classes. Well, I didn't drop them. I, I decided to go to, 
just that one class I dedicated the whole semester just for that math because I'm like really not good at it. And so um, I hired a tutor. I ended up finding a job to help me pay for a tutor. And I was able to pass the class. And once I was able to do that, then I completed all the criteria to come to Fresno State. So that was really, really hard for someone um, like me that struggles with math. So yeah, that's, that tackles that question. And then I'll hand it over. I would say for me, coming as a transfer student, one of the things I really struggled with um, was taking upper division classes and having some of the professors just assume uh, that all the students knew how to do certain things. For example, Blackboard, I was very unfamiliar with it. So it would be uh, difficult when a professor said, oh, go on Blackboard and print this document or do the assignment. Uh, so to overcome that, I just uh, had to speak with the professors and ask them, and, and most of them were uh, very accommodating and would, would show us how to do that. Hello. I think my biggest obstacle was trying to learn how to be a college student. Um, I was I learned how to manage being a high school student with my learning disability, but um, coming to this university, I had to completely learn rewrite how to be a student. I continuously um, are, are is <clears throat> sorry. I'm continuously learning how to be a student effectively um, manage. Uh, my studies and my social life, my financial <laughs> uh, successes. So I think that was that has continuously been my biggest obstacle is just kind of learning how to be an adult and a student at the same time. Good afternoon, faculty, staffs, and students. My name is Mong, and I'm a nursing student attending here at Fresno State. So to answer the question of what was my most difficult barriers and how to overcome it would be adjusting to the life of being a Fresno State student. It was tremendously difficult as a first year, starting as a freshman, as a first generation student here on campus with no one to guide. You know, even when you're lead to the right place, the question starts to come onto your head. What do I even ask? How do I even ask? What is there? All of these questions pop up, and that was really, it, it got frustrating to, to a point where, you know, you just say, I'm stuck, but hey, I got to move. So with that, how I overcame this situation was getting involved. And when I'm talking about getting involved, it's not about volunteering at the children's hospital, volunteering for the food community bank, but it's to be involved and engaged on what is available for you on campus. And that is what I did from volunteering with the University Health Center, from being with the Public Health Department. From that point on, you start to build network. And soon, my questions start to become answers. And that was how I kind of solved what I have been stuck up on. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jory Robles. I am a graduate student on campus. I am in the counseling program, specifically in marriage, child, and family counseling. I think one of the biggest barriers for me as a college student has definitely been um, being an undocumented college student. Um, I don't feel like I truly understood what it really meant to be undocumented until I entered college. and. Um, I basically just kind of had to realize that a lot of the, the things that were offered to students didn't apply to me. And so a lot of the scholarships that students were offered, I couldn't apply for. Um, just having to struggle with um, having to kind of just figure things out on my own, knowing that I was kind of like this separate category from everyone else was really a struggle. Um, I had an older sister who graduated from Fresno State. and. Having her really helped me because she was kind of that guide for me. So I was able to kind of just see what she did and kind of just follow what she did. And she was a lot more um, willing to ask questions than I was. So she seeked a lot of different services, both on and off campus, that um, she was able to share with me. And I was able to kind of just pick up on what she was um, basically receiving. And so that helped me out a lot, but I feel like 
I'm still currently kind of trying to overcome that. As a graduate student, I feel like it's still really, really hard as an undocumented student, and so I'm still kind of in the middle of my struggle, um, trying to kind of just figure things out. Um, and I don't have um, kind of like a guide now being in grad school, so I'm just kind of trying to figure stuff out on my own, but I definitely feel like getting involved on campus has helped me a lot. I currently work at the Cross-Cultural and Gender Center, and I've been there for about four years now. I started there my sophomore year, and so that really, really helped me to just feel accepted on campus and kind of find a place where I could call home and have them support me in every way to just continue to do what I do and continue to pursue my career and stuff. So that was really helpful for me. Great. So as we talk about barriers that you've faced on campus, there are a lot of um, offices and, and support services here at Fresno State that are here to help you and, and all of our students face those barriers. So I'd like to ask, which of those offices um, have you found yourself turning to more often? And, and why those offices in particular? OK, so for me, uh, Definitely the uh, the library the library research. I, I feel like we spend students like yes we, we we go to class and yes we we love lecture, but we spend most of our days or most of our hours at the library uh, doing research. I feel like research is critical. Like we have a lot of papers to do in all of our classes, and uh, getting good grades and graduating. Um, If you like, if if you want to do those things, then we we have to we have to do research. And so, um, talking to librarians and learning how to how to use the the uh, the, the research website and finding our articles. Um, so yes, the library it's 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 imperative. Um, second thing uh, that's been helpful for me is the Career Development Center. Um, they provide us, and I feel like not everyone knows about it. Um, but uh, yes, they, they help you, they, they guide you, like they kind of walk you through the things that you want to do in life uh, once you graduate from here. Uh, they're extremely helpful. Um, I've gotten some clothes from there to go to interviews. Um, so yeah, it's, I'd spend, I spent some time to go in there for help. Uh, and then the recreation center. Um, like currently I'm taking 16 units and it's just like, I'm, sh I'm sure you hear this on a daily basis and it's probably like, Whatever, it's just 16 units, right? But um, going to the recreation center, I just let out all of my stress. I go there, work out, just let it all out. Um, and it really, really helps um, just to just, uh, be focused. We spend a lot of time on books. And so going out there and working out, um, yeah, it releases our stress. Definitely the recreation center is important. And uh, also the student cup and board. Um, I live across campus. Um, and I have to, I don't have that much time to be buying groceries, and it really helps me to save money. Um, I go and buy some groceries, but every time I go to the cup and board, I, I come home with food and, and, uh, and also some hygiene like packets they have. Like, uh, I know it sounds mundane, but um, toilet paper and toothpaste and beans make all the, all the difference uh, when you're a college student. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Preston. Thank you for all the offices and all the uh, student support. Uh, we appreciate it. Oh my gosh, there is an entire list. And as I look around the audience, there are so many different people that have that helped me so much while I was an undergrad. So um, many of you know who do know me personally, I kind of have a bit of academic ADD. So I took advantage of so many different opportunities while I was at Fresno State. So um, aside from the Smith Camp Family Honors College providing just so much financial support, printing, copying, parking, I mean, the full package that they offered just really allowed me to take advantage of so many other opportunities at Fresno State. So just looking around the room, um, so at the first year, I was actually part of the symphonic band, which not very many people, people know about, except Dr. Olivares, who's sitting in the audience, who actually saw me play the bassoon in the band. So I was part of the band briefly. Um, I was part of the camp program with Rodrigo, with Gabby, with Ophelia. Um, I was part of UMS with, uh, with Raul Moreno, who has done so much amazing work. Um, I got the opportunity to be involved in a lot of research. So definitely what really helped 
helped me get into the PhD program that I'm in now is all the research experience I was able to get as an undocumented student. So again, as an undocumented student before DACA, before AB 130, AB 131, there weren't many opportunities for me, for me to do research. So I had to knock on professors' doors. Um, I was very fortunate to have done research through uh, the LSA and pre program, which allowed me to do a project on uh, math theory. I did a paper on uh, some complicated knot theory that ended up tying in the Fibonacci sequence. It, it was presented at different conferences. I got the opportunity to do research in the economics department, thanks to Dean Gonzalez, who is around here. Um, I got the opportunity to do research in the education and leadership program with Dr. Magdaleno, with Dr. Wise, with so many different individuals. Um, so really, I mean, it's really the individuals at Fresno State that I can name that are just are so wonderful on so many levels. Gabby offered her apartment to my brother, who later on came here as an undergraduate. So I think that one of the most beautiful things about Fresno State is that it really feels like home. It really feels like family just coming in here today, hugging everybody. I always felt that the entire time I was here. So it's really that feeling that I think really my parents can resonate with that coming as parents who had no no idea how to communicate with staff, how to communicate with faculty members. They were very fortunate to run into Raul Moreno, even before, who spoke to them in Spanish, who talked to them, who convinced that it, that it was okay to let their daughter go off into Fresno State and stay at the dorm. So I think it's really those relationships, those individu individuals here at Fresno State that just provide such an amazing educational experiences for all the students that come here. For me, I'd say there were uh, two major things that I've taken advantage of uh, since I've been here that have been just instrumental in my education. First is the Writing Center here on campus. Um, I think it's a great service, and I think it's, it's really cool to have an opportunity to have work reviewed uh, with students. So it's, it's not a professor necessarily, but it's a fellow student, and I think that uh, feedback is really helpful. Um, the other is disability services, um, and I think one of the best things about it is they don't, um, it's very discreet, and I don't think that or professors treat you any differently if you're a part of that or if you're taking advantage. And for me, that's a huge benefit to be able to uh, take advantage of that, but know that professors don't see you differently or, or treat you any differently because of I definitely agree with that. <laughs> um, for me, um, I think, well, resources on this campus is just, they're wonderful. And, um, but from my personal experience, I didn't as I didn't I didn't feel like there was a space um, for African American students on this campus, me and the other group of people. So we formed an organization called ABC, which is the African Black Coalition, which made um, which was presented a list of demands to the president to the president and his cabinet saying these are the um, this is what Fresno State needs for their black students to help them grow and to help them graduate. So uh, alongside with ABC and the president and his cabinet, we came up with the Office of Black Student Success, which is, um, <clears throat> which is I, which, you know, just started this year, but I feel like it is um, an amazing program on campus to really help um, students uh, of African and African American descent. I also utilize many services on this campus, such as the disability um, services. They, they help me a lot, um, as well as the services and programs in the Cross Culture and Gender Center. I got my suit today from the closet. <laughs> um, so just there's so, it's there's a bun abundance of resources on this campus. And I feel like every student should take advantage of them because it's, I think it's really vital to the success that, um, that you will have on this campus if you don't take, if you don't utilize the resources on this campus, I really feel like you're missing out and you're also making, um, making it harder on yourself as a student. Wow, I really agree with that as well. That Fresno State as a campus, you guys have so much resources for us as students, and I have also utilized a lot of those resources as well. That ranges from the Cross Culture and Gender Center all the way to the University Health Center. But if I were to pinpoint a specific resources that I myself use the most, is would be the University Health Center. I used it so much that I don't may go to my own personal <laughs> health provider no more. 
I don't even go to Rite Aid no more to, to purchase the medications because students, if you guys don't know, a lot of the things at, at the University of Health and Counseling Center is free or is very, very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the sad thing about, you know, um, as students, you know, on, on be, speak on the behalf of us is that I also agree with some of the panelists on here is that, you know, we have these resources, but students are not utilizing it to the maximum potential. And also the student cupboard, free food into student closet, really good. I've used all of those myself as well. So, yeah. So like I mentioned a little earlier, I don't feel like I really had a lot of um, resources on campus that applied to me as an undocumented student, but I think that we've made a lot of progress throughout the years. Um, at least when I first started here, uh, my first year, I don't remember really um, using any like type of resource, but I did make a few connections. I uh, was able to connect with Raul Moreno as well. He was one that really helped me in terms of being able to apply for jobs, being able to just get job experience before I even started working. And so that really helped me in terms of resources off campus. And from there, I was kind of able to make a little more of an effort to make connections on campus. I kind of realized how much it really helped me to make connections off campus, and I wanted to kind of bring that for myself on campus. But I didn't really feel like I found a lot of resources that really kind of helped me in terms of the perspective of an undocumented student, but I did find other services like the Student Health and Counseling Center I used a lot as well. I felt like that was really useful for me um, as an undergrad. I also, when I started working at the Cross-Cultural and Gender Center my sophomore year, I was able to make a few more connections through the center there, and I really felt like I had a few more people that kind of helped me through the process of just learning what college was like. Um, I really felt like I relied a lot on the people rather than like the services that I received. I really appreciated the people that I met there and I kind of just used the advice that they had to give me and I still continue to do that now just to kind of just learn a little bit more about what it's like now to be a grad student and things like that. So I really feel like the people kind of were the ones that kind of helped me through my college experience. But I do feel like now as a grad student, I'm seeing a lot more for students who are undocumented. We have the Dream Success Center, which I am a peer mentor at, and I really enjoy my experience there. I feel like now that we have that center, I do have a place to belong as an undocumented student and I'm able to get my questions answered. I know Gabby works really hard to just provide different resources for us. Right now she's um, working on different kind of things for undocumented students and that's something that I've really appreciated because as a grad student I felt like being undocumented I was even more scared and so having that support from Gabby from the Dream Success Center I'm able to just kind of feel a little more relief because I know that regardless of what changes kind of go on, I, I'm always like, you know, Gabby got us, like she's, she's gonna figure it out. So I feel a little more like hope in, in just realizing that there's someone who cares about us and you know, the people who um, helped to bring on the Dream Success Center really did a great job in reaching out to all of us who are undocumented who maybe before didn't feel like we had a place on campus. So I really appreciate um, everyone's efforts to get that going. So as we talk about the resources and student support services offered at Fresno State, I wanted to talk about staff and faculty uh, as individuals being there to support students. And so I wanted to ask the panel, in your experience, do you feel that uh, faculty and staff have been uh, approachable if you have a question or concern? And in what ways have you uh, tried to make, make sure faculty and staff take notice of you if you do have that question or concern? Thank you. So just to answer your question, uh, yes, definitely there. 
they're there for you. Um, now, having said that, um, we shouldn't try to email s staff or faculty like the day, the day before the assignments are due. <laughs> Wait. I've done that in the past, and it doesn't turn out that well. Um, so, but yes, so like two, three days before, if you we have questions about assignments, if we have questions about anything, um, I've been uh, fortunate enough to 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 get to get a response in a in a timely manner, um, and it's extremely helpful. Um, now, having as, as I said before, um, trying to contact them during holidays, so trying to contact them like the night before the assignment is due. Uh, I mean, you see the picture, right? They, they will try to get back at you, but they're like, really, one day before the summit is not even fair. Uh, but yes, they definitely, uh, they're there for us. Uh, f uh, staff, the same way, if, if I have to done, like, I have to do business and I have to enroll, um, uh, sometimes their phones are down or some, like, some, like they might be at a meeting or they might be um, getting training. Um, I just leave a message and and uh, and then I hear from them. So yeah, my experience have, have been uh, a great experience as far as uh, getting in contact with faculty and staff, and they always accommodate um, time for students. And in, in, in my view and in, in my experience. So thank you. I think that in my experience, um, so it may be a little bit difficult to believe, but I was very shy coming into Fresno State, and I hate, was just terrified of public speaking. So it just was something that I was not ready to do, and, and it's something that also as an undocumented individual, I just grew up with a lot of fear. So the entire time going through high school and even at the beginning of college here at Fresno State, I was told to not talk about my status at all. So when it came to asking about, um, as the student mentions, about the different services that were, available to, that were available to me, I really had to lose that fear of having to tell somebody, well, I'm asking this particular question because I don't qualify for this particular service or because I'm undocumented. So it really took a long time to sort of let go of that fear and let go of that stigma of having to say I'm undocumented. And I think that um, one of the things that really helped as I was looking for research experiences specifically was that for some individuals that, such as, like I mentioned before, Raul, and Hernan, who's also in the back over there, that you know, really gave me that confidence to just talk about my status when it was needed. However, when I needed to look for research experiences or other things, I didn't have to say I was undocumented. I mean, I literally knocked on a math professor's door, didn't mention anything about being undocumented. I just said, you know, I think your research looks really interested. He was doing economics and math. You know, are, are you interested in doing some summer research? You know, are you interested in looking for a research assistant to help you with your research? And he was brand new into the college. This is Professor uh, Tomas Forgosh uh, in the math department. And he said, yes. I mean, again, nothing to do with being undocumented. I just wanted to do research in math, and I wanted to do trade models. And he said, yes. So we ended up working on a, on a research project over the summer that um, culminated in, uh, in, um, in an article that was also presented at a research conference. So even with that experience, I think that um, oftentimes for students, it's really just letting go of that fear of just knocking on a professor's door, very similar instances with Professor Antonio Avalos in the economics department where it, it just, it is very difficult. Like I said, it took a very long time for me to get over so many different fears, um, having, you know, grown up being undocumented. But later on, it was just losing that fear that maybe professors wouldn't want to talk to me, maybe they're too busy, maybe, I mean, it's just kind of, the, you know, professors and faculty members can be a little scary sometimes when you're just coming in and wanting to help them out with their research. So, so really my suggestion and what helped me as an undergraduate student was to just lose that fear and not be afraid to just knock on somebody's door. The worst they could say is say no, and then you just bother them again the next semester or the next summer and just keep asking, which is what I did to get many of my experiences. Sorry, thank you so much. To answer the question, I, I would say yes, definitely. I, I think they're very approachable, and I think that professors care about your success in and out of the classroom. Uh, I was applying to law school this semester, and uh, one of the law schools I was applying to needed an additional letter of rec, and I had two days to get it in. I went to a professor, and I said, look, I know this is last minute and really unprofessional. And he said, no worries. Come to my office, and we'll get it taken care of. And I was just blown away that the professors care that much to take time for an out-of-the-classroom issue, take care of it that quickly. And I've just been really impressed my time at State that professors really do care and take the time to help you. Um, I 
in my experience, I've had really good experience um, talking, having conversations with professors. I know it is. All, I, I know I always have to muster up some courage to uh, talk to professors, and I, you know, because when you hear, oh, he, Doctor So and So, Miss So and Professor So and So, I think it's some type. Of, uh, I think it's a stigma that a fear that we get as a student, especially freshmen and um, and sophomore students, to where we think that they're just way up here. And like they're, re they're people too, they go through the same things or went through the same things that we have as students. So I think um, definitely it's about trying to just realize that, you know, they're people too and, um, and that they care. I, I know that the black faculty and staff here on campus are just amazing to me. Um, they've helped me out so much and just always there to just push me to grow and just succeed on this campus. So I'm very thankful to them. I too would agree as well that a lot of office, a lot of professors here on campus is very approachable from my experiences. My experiences were both good and some of them were so-so. So looking uh, into my past in my three years attending Fresno State, I've actually seen professor that, you know, encourage students to attend their office hours. But the fact that, you know, students don't really use that a lot as well. But when I myself went inside, you know, to meet with an officer, to meet with a professor, I truly saw that, you know, the professor was happy that I'm actually use, utilizing the, the professor out of the class. And this also varies between the class size. For example, if the class is a huge class, then probably asking a question might not be the best choice in my perspective. I've tried it and you know, it, it doesn't really work as well as you think it will. But then they're very supportive. If you know what you want and you have the courage to just go and ask, they will help you the same as they helped me as well. And I really appreciate that on campus, we have professors who cares like that, especially in the nursing program. I can't believe. <laughs> that we have such amazing professors here that actually will not let you go. Every single class you go into, they will literally hold on to my hand and say, I will not let you fail. And that's what I need. That's what all student needs. I can definitely say that as um, as a college student in the beginning, my first and second year, I had a really rough time connecting with staff and faculty. And as I mentioned earlier, I made a lot of connections off campus before I kind of moved to making those same connections on campus. So my first and second year of college, I struggled a lot with just kind of feeling like Fresno State was you know, a place where I could actually hang out and not just come to my classes and go home. And so I really just kind of spent my first and second year of college just coming to class, going home, wasn't really, it wasn't really an experience where I was engaged at Fresno State. I was just kind of just coming to class just because I knew that that's what I had to do. But for my third and fourth year of college, that's when I kind of said, you know, I wanna get more involved. Um, starting my second year at the Cross-Cultural and Gender Center, starting to get my job experience there, I was able to make different connections, both with my um, coworkers as well as with the people that were my supervisors at the time, and they really encouraged me to just find other opportunities on campus, not just at the Cross-Cultural and Gender Center, but I do feel like that was kind of my home for a while before I was confident enough to just branch out of there. And I feel like just my fourth year and now as a grad student is when I've kind of made more of those connections. I've made connections with the Dream Success Center, with Gabi. I made connections with um, the person who was my supervisor, Jessica Adams, and she really pushed me to just kind of really like get out there, participate in different events. Um, she told me about this panel, and so she was like, I need you to 
you know, do this. And so it really helps me to just kind of get different people just telling me, hey, like there's opportunities for you to get experience here. And I really appreciate that because I feel like it's helped me a lot in terms of just getting that confidence and that courage to go up and speak in front of a crowd to just let people know what my experience is like and allowing myself to connect with other people who maybe feel the same way who maybe started off not being able to make connections on campus either and i feel like it just overall helps me to feel like fresno state is more of my home and i definitely feel like i spend a lot of time on campus now in comparison to my first and second year of college and I can definitely say that it feels a little more like my home like I can actually come on campus and I know a lot of people I walk around and I have people you know saying hey like I saw you at this panel and you know it really makes me feel good because I know that people are listening that people are feeling like they can connect with me and I'm able to get a lot of experience both volunteering and job experience I'm able to do all of that now but I definitely feel like the the struggle was my first and second year of college just kind of like connecting and I think it's just a new experience overall so it's definitely scary but I think that just kind of reaching out and seeing what services we had what you know people were on campus both staff faculty was able to kind of push me to just do a little bit more so I'm definitely feeling a lot more confident now and um, I feel like I can do a lot more now than I could in the past because I didn't have those connections so they have definitely helped me a lot. Great so as we talk about um, your interactions with faculty and staff uh, this next question is has two parts to it the first being in what ways do you think faculty, staff, and students could be more inclusive in their, act, in their interactions with each other um, so that everyone feels more comfortable on campus? And two, how do you personally contribute to the university's efforts in making sure that students, faculty, and staff uh, feel a sense of belonging on campus? Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, just to answer your first question, um, I have a uh, professor, uh, Dr. McCowey, um, Let's just say that, uh, like, so he holds uh, regular business hours. Um, he does he does the con conventional approach, but he also has he kind of tweaks it a little bit. Um, sometimes he holds um, office hours at Starbucks <laughs> on campus. Uh, so so it's not like uh, you feel pressure, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I'm on Lucy Dog. Like he's probably gonna chew me out or something. So <laughs> so you come out like you're like totally free. You come up, you you get your cup of coffee, sit down and chat and talk about, uh, you talk about um, academics. So I really like his approach. Um, sometimes I, I fear someone mentioned in the panel, um, having the fear, like, you know, you know, this boldest person has a PhD, it's like, I'm just an undergrad, right? Um, but uh, having, having that um, unconventional approach, I think, uh, gives us some easiness um, to just uh, come up and, and talk to them. Uh, to answer your second question, um, the second question is really simple. Uh, I just wear my Fresno State gear, really, and I have a Fresno State license plate. And so I feel like when people get the people see that, people get the message, they're like, hey, I want to be part of this club. I, I, I want to I wanna, uh, feel like I, I belong here. Um, having said that, I remember uh, applying or trying to transfer to, when I was trying to transfer out of Fresno City and try to get into a four-year uh, university, I remember applying to big schools and I was fortunate enough to uh, be accepted uh, at Cal Poly um, and uh, like San Francisco State uh, and Point Loma in San Diego. Um, I really didn't think, like, because I live here, I was like, mm, Fresno State, you know, I'm not so sure I want to go to Fresno State, but um, now that I'm here, um, it's mind blowing. I think Fresno State uh, doesn't get the credit that Fresno State deserves. I think. Fresno State is one of the biggest, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm being biased here, but Fresno State is one of the best schools, uh, even better and cheaper. Like you get more for your money, I believe. So, all right, hand it over. 
Well, I think that one of the things I think about is uh, the previous panel that was here and really talking about um, the humanist part of being an educator, or being an administrator, or a staff member. I think that one of the things that resonates the most with me is really uh, every single person at Fresno State that I got the opportunity to interact with that supported me took the time to listen to my story. That really just didn't, didn't I mean, even just having that conversation when, when I called SMIC camp, didn't just look at me and say, oh, you're undocumented. Well, okay, that throws you off this list. No one ever did that. Every single person that I spoke with really took the time to listen, to ask questions. Well, where did you grow up? Where did you come from? How old were you when you came here? I mean, I think all those different, th th those different interactions are would really help all students really to, to succeed. When you get to know the students, when you get to know their stories, when you have shared lived experiences with your students, with the administrators, with uh, the faculty, the staff members, that, that, that really is what, make a, what makes a difference, I think, in any educational setting. Um, so, so that's why, again, I just have this feeling of really just coming home when, when I come to Fresno State. And I think what I do in my part, um, so I'm big on social Social media. I've had the opportunity to speak at multiple events, multiple conferences throughout the country, and I talk about Fresno State just so much. I talk about the different individuals, Dean Gonzalez, who helped me, who found innovative ways to support me when no one else would. I mean, I really mean that, that I, coming out of high school and trying to figure out how I was going to get to school being undocumented just was so extremely challenging, emotionally draining. So the fact that um, I got the opportunity to be here and again, all these experience that, the experiences that I share with you today, I share across the country and I write on my biographies, I talk about in every single um, event I go to. So again, so happy to be here again today and I'm more than happy to support Fresno State, to support uh, the different programs and services uh, that are offered here at Fresno State in any way I can. Speaking on being inclusive, I think it's, it's natural anywhere, including Fresno State, that there's often this uh, division between majors. You hang out with your major, you socialize with people in your major, and sometimes it's hard to kind of get outside those circles. Um, I know in pol uh, political science, I know that the first year I was here, like the only people I spoke to were political science majors. And it was just hard to kind of break that divide. But I think professors do a good job at bringing up events, um, sporting things on campus, uh, panels like this, just events where you get to interact with uh, people outside your major, which I think is a big part of uh, it building that inclusive attitude and, and spirit on campus. Um, something that I'm very blessed to do, I'm the current um, vice president of student leadership for Sigma Alpha Lambda, which is an honor society here on campus. Uh, it's a great opportunity. I get to work with uh, just many majors and see people from different walks of life. And I think that's really important here on campus for all the majors to kind of work together and come together. I feel that um, a better way for, stu for students and um, professors to um, just get, a not necessarily get along, but to better interact with one each other is kind of like how he was saying about meeting outside of the classroom. I think most of the time we, uh, when we see our professors, it's either, you know, it's in the classroom or during office hours. And I think our professors have a lot to offer us other than, you know, teaching us the curriculum. So I think um, a better way to utilize um, a time is to, to just um, find ways outside of the classroom to interact with our professors with, you know, because they do, they have research, they do other things. So I think that's one of the main things. I know how I get involved with the campus is that I am one of the executive board members on, on the Black Students United. Um, I've been the past president for the past two years. I am a part of the, of, of the African Black Coalition, which, um, which works heavily with trying to recruit and uh, with, rec um, sorry with um, to recruit and to retain students of of color especially uh, well black students of color so I think that's how I kind of I contribute to the campus and just going to events and supporting everyone's events not just people in my major or um, people that look like me I think the big thing is to like you said going outside of our comfort zone and really just interacting with the whole campus because this is a very diverse campus and uh, everyone should should go out and just experience um, every different culture or 
um, just, it just, this campus just has so much to offer. And, you know, you're just limiting yourself if you don't take advantage of it. Like I've said before about Fresno State, we all have amount of a great and tremendous resources that is given to us. But as a student myself, I can see that there's one simple thing that a lot of us, faculties, staff, student assistants, that we are missing. And I think, let me rephrase that, I can see that we are missing the power of the smile. Really honest. We don't no longer ask, how are you today? How are you doing? In order to feel belong, in order to feel like you are a part of a community, in order to feel respected, acknowledged, that simple thing that you can do, that all of us can do, will change a lot of things. I am proud to be a Fresno State student. I am proud to walk into those resources. But when I walk in there, I go stand at that line and I stare at the student assistant or the front desk person and I'm like, um, I, I have a question. Why? Why? You know, I immediately then feel awkward. Why is that? I am proud to be a part of the College of Human Health and Services Advising and Career Development Center that my supervisor, Shamel, taught us to say, welcome, how can I help you today? Welcome, how can I be of service? And that makes a difference. In order to reach out to our students, we need to provide them that service. But in order to provide them that service, we need to reach out to them, not just by social media, but by treating them right. Because then they will tell their friends, hey, come check this out. Don't be fooled by the words of people because it will go far and fast. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know that. But last and not least, some of the things that I have done in the Fresno State community to give to the students, to give to my own ethnicity, the Hmong community as well, and other race, is being a peer mentor, being a vice president, being a peer ambassador of wellness to advocate. You reach out and not, and it doesn't matter if not everyone does it, but as long as you reach out, to one person that can change. As long as you can change one person, their mind, and they will influence not only one, but all those who surround them. I really feel like one of the things that helped me in feeling more connected to different staff and faculty on, camp on campus was just feeling like they were more relatable to me and just kind of like having them just connect with me on different ways that were personal to me and not just telling me, oh, we have these services, but actually saying like, I know what your struggle is, like I understand it, I'm sorry that you're having to to deal with that specific struggle and just basically kind of showing that they cared versus just telling me what we had on campus. And I really felt like I got that from a few different people on campus and that allowed me to feel a little more just safe in knowing that there were places that cared about me versus just provided me services. And I really felt like being a part of the Cross-Cultural and Gender Center and working specifically with Dr. Puda, with Jessica, I was able to find that uh, support and I wasn't feeling like these are just my supervisors. I was feeling like these are people who I can relate with. These are people who truly care about my future, who 
really want to just help me get out there and don't just say things because they feel like it's their job to say it, but they actually do genuinely care. And that really helped me in feeling more confident in myself and knowing that people did understand my struggle and they did care. Um, and in terms of my identity as undocumented, I felt that a lot with Gabi as well, sharing with all of her peer mentors that she struggled being undocumented really helped me, you know, feel like, oh, this is someone who's been through the struggle, who understands, who maybe even had it like harder than I did. And so I was able to just kind of appreciate the fact that she wasn't just there helping us just because it was her job, but that she genuinely cared about us and she could relate to us personally, really helped me, you know, understand a little more of what it feels like to have a, a stronger connection with people. And I felt that way as well with um, my supervisor, Jessica, because she really just kind of like talked to us in a way that wasn't like a supervisor, it was more like a friend, it was more like someone who genuinely cared about what we have to say on campus and she really encourages us all the time to just have a voice and just pretty much just speak up for ourselves and I feel like that has really helped me personally because I didn't feel like I could always do that and so that really helped me and I also feel like I'm still kind of learning the different services that we have on campus and one of the new connections that I was able to make was with Rima actually, who works at the Students with Disabilities Center and um, having a, a younger sibling who's trying to come to Fresno State who has a disability, I was able to connect with her and just learn a little bit more about the services that we have for students with disabilities. And one of the things she said to me that really stuck with me was, she said, you know, here at Fresno State, we're a family and we look out for each other. And I really appreciated that because I felt like as an undocumented student, I didn't feel like I had that and I didn't feel like I truly understood that um, I could have a family here at Fresno State. And so that really helped me feel more confident in knowing that if my sister were to come to Fresno State, that I could help her in feeling a part of Fresno State a lot more and that she has different services that she can take advantage of as well. Um, specifically with what I feel I contribute to campus is with my work that I do at the Cross-Cultural and Gender Center, I work as a graduate student coordinator there and I work specifically with the LGBTQ plus programs and services. And I really feel like I work with a completely different group that is not as well represented on campus and I'm trying to just work to, to allow them to feel like they have a sense of, um, of unity here on campus. And I want them to feel that they're welcome, that they're represented. And I feel like I'm still continuing to do that work. And as Fresno State, we're still continuing to grow um, in terms of the services that we do provide for the LGBTQ plus community. So I am trying to just, basically divide myself through different kind of programs on campus. So like I mentioned earlier, I do work at the Dream Success Center as a peer mentor as well. And I feel like that is very um, beneficial for a lot of undocumented students because they're able to see us and see that there, there are people who are undocumented, who have graduated, who are in a graduate program, and they kind of see like, oh, it's not impossible. And so I do feel like I, try to get myself involved there as well. And I try to just basically look for other programs that I can get involved in where I can share my experience and just basically tell students, you know, this is what we have to offer that maybe I didn't know about when I was um, a first or second year college student. So I definitely try to share the resources that I do know about with other students so that they can start to make those connections a lot earlier than I was able to do it. So kind of just pushing them to get a little more out there the way that I felt a lot of people pushed me. Thank you. So that concludes the panel. So I'd just like to ask if everyone could join me in thanking our panelists for sharing their stories with us.